Well, hey everyone. Uh, well, today I want to take just a few moments to just kind of talk about healing. Uh, one of the uh, big things about Embrace, our church, is that we talk about prayer and healing a lot. And that's one of our core values is we want to be a spirit-led church. We want to be a church that is um, surrendered and open to the direction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we want to create a culture where we are consistently praying for one another and praying over one another. And one of the reasons that we do this is very simple, is it's Jesus. Uh, when you read the Gospels, uh, Jesus' ministry consisted of two primary things, proclamation and healing, meaning preaching the word, but then also doing good deeds for others. And you read in the Gospels that Jesus not only did this, but then he commissions his disciples and us to do the same ministry that we've witnessed him doing as well, that Jesus calls us to preach the word and to heal others in his name. Now, there are two extremes when we talk about healing that we see oftentimes in the churches. Uh, on one extreme, there are churches that just never talk about this aspect of Jesus. They just don't talk about healing. They don't pray for other people's healing. And the primary reason for this, for this is because this topic is confusing. Uh, it's a little bit mysterious. It's hard to understand. It can get out of balance real quickly. So a lot of churches just kind of ignore this. And as a result, um, a lot of Christians just never hear about the healing ministry of Jesus. And as a result, there are some people who've gone to church their whole life and they've never experienced someone praying over them specifically for their life, for their situation, for their circumstance. Now, on the other extreme, there are churches that almost treat healing like a formula and they treat God almost like a formula. Like if you basically just pray hard enough and if you have enough faith, then God will always answer your prayers in the way that you want them answered instantly. And if that doesn't happen, then that means that you just don't have enough faith. Now, in between those two extremes, there is a healthy theology of healing. Uh, there's a way to think about this that is consistent with Scripture and consistent with our experience. Now, when it comes to healing, there is a little bit of a mystery here. Uh, sometimes when we pray for people, uh, we see this healing happen instantaneously, and it's a miraculous moment. And I've experienced this myself. I've seen this uh, happen to other people, and it's an amazing moment where someone is prayed for, and that healing comes instantly. That prayer is answered specifically in that moment. Now, there are other times that we pray for people, we pray for their healing, but that healing is a process. It's not instantaneous. Um, this is particularly true when we talk about relational healing or emotional healing, is that oftentimes someone can pray for you, and that is the beginning step or the first step in a process of being healed. That could take weeks or even months or years. And that, yes, healing uh, requires prayer, but in that process that you might need other things uh, like um, community support or counseling or medicine, or further education, that within that healing, there's prayer, but there's also these other elements that contribute to that healing as well. We believe in that. And then there are other moments, and this is the hard part, is sometimes we pray for something, we pray for someone, and the prayer is not answered in the way that we would have hoped. Um, the healing does not take place. You know, I don't, I don't like to be negative, but anytime I hear someone testify to a healing, I think about those in the church who did not receive a healing. Uh, anytime I hear someone talk about the miracle of being cancer-free, I think about those who are sitting in the church who have had a loved one die because of cancer. And so we ask that question, like, why do some people get a healing and others do not? Why are there some people who are very faithful Christians, uh, they get the miracle, but then there are other faithful Christians, they pray and people pray for them, and they don't receive that miracle. Why does that happen? Now, I want to let you know I'm not smart enough to answer that question. We don't have time to answer that question fully. But I think one of the things that can help us is understanding the why of miracles and understanding the why of healings. See, if you read the Gospels, the point of the healing ministry of Jesus is not the healings themselves, but who the healings point to. Uh, for instance, uh, Jesus um, raised Lazarus from the dead. And uh, this, this healing... Uh, was a window into God's future. That's what they are. Healings are, they point us in the direction of what God's future, what God's kingdom will be when it comes into full completion. So Jesus lay, uh, raises Lazarus from the dead, showing that one day all of us will be raised from death to life. But make no mistake, Lazarus later died. We're quite certain of that. Um, Jesus multiplying the bread and feeding those thousands of people was a signpost into the future that one day, 
all bellies will be fed. But make no mistake, that very night where Jesus fed a thousand, I'm sure there were thousands of others who went to bed hungry that very night. You see, these healings are a window into God's future that one day all things will be made whole. One day all things will be restored. Uh, but right now, we live in a fallen world, a broken world, a world full of sin and struggle and pain. And just because we're Christians, that does not preclude us from the difficulties of life, the struggles of life, and living in a fallen world and fallen bodies. You see, a child cured today will one day be an adult buried. All of us, all of our lives, all of our bodies will one day pass away. That is the reality that we live in. So the healings that we receive, uh, they are windows into the future. The point of the healings are not the healings themselves. The point of the healings are who they point us to, and they point us to Jesus. They show us a Savior who is compassionate and kind and merciful and caring. They point us to a Savior who is not a distant deity, but a Savior who has entered into our world, our brokenness, our struggle, and He's with us in the midst of that. They point us to a Savior who has come, and one day He will come again. And when He does, He will make all things whole. That one day we will have no more pain, no more sorrow, no more hate, no more violence. One day every tear will be wiped away, and one day every disease will disappear. And our moments that we get of healing, they are special, they are unique, that's why they're miraculous. Uh, they are all windows into this future of who Jesus is and what he will do in completion when his kingdom comes in all its fullness. And so at Embrace, um, we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to have healing services. We're going to pray specifically for people. We're going to pray with boldness because we believe that when we pray, we get to participate in Jesus' ministry of healing. And we believe that when we pray, we get to experience Jesus' presence in that moment. And that's what it's all about. It's about being with Jesus and doing the things that Jesus has called us to do. We pray because we get to be with him. Not because every prayer turns out like we think it's going to turn out. And not because every healing is instant. Uh, but when we pray... And we get to participate in the ministry of Jesus. And so we want to encourage you, uh, even in your own families, even in your own homes, if you're parents or grandparents, to make it a practice of praying for your children, uh, praying for one another, of praying blessing over your kids and your grandkids. Um, it's tragic to me. There's so many people who've gone their whole life and nobody has actually prayed for them specifically. And so we as a church, as in our culture, uh, what we want in each home, uh, we want people praying for one another. Because in the midst of that, uh, Jesus meets us in that place. And we get to experience his presence, experience his grace, and his love, and his power. Let me pray for us. Uh, Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you that we have a Savior who's with us, who loves us, who cares about us. And Lord, we thank you so much for the moments where we get to experience your healing touch, where you've healed us of bitterness or resentment, or where you've healed us of a physical ailment, or when you've restored relationships in our family. Lord, we thank you for those miracles, Lord, and they are windows into a future where one day all things will be made whole. So Lord, may we live expectant lives. Uh, Lord, may we pray, even when it's hard, even when it doesn't make sense, Lord, may you find us faithful. And Lord, may you give us strength at the times where life is hard and disappointing and where things don't turn out like we had hoped. Lord, give us strength, give us faith to trust you in those moments as well. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you that you are always faithful. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, again, we hope this uh, resource is very helpful for you, for your family, for your church, uh, for your small group. Uh, we pray that it would encourage you to press in um, into the faithfulness of God and to be expectant of what God can do in your life. Uh, as always, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to email us, uh, message us. We'd be glad to help you in any way that we can. We hope you have a great week and God bless.